It gives me great pleasure now to welcome Mr. Rajiv Jain, Chairman and CIO of GQG Partners on DT Now to talk about the deal which has made everyone happy. His 15,000 crore investment in the Dani group of stocks certainly lifted the spirit of Indian markets. Rajiv needs no introduction whatsoever. His understanding of India, his market beating returns and his experience which he brings on table is completely unparalleled. So he's the man of the moment and everybody wants to know that what really is the thinking behind this very large commitment. Mr. Jain, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's a Sunday morning and yet you managed to accommodate this interview request. I believe you're joining us from Australia. So thank you very much for that. Well, thanks for having me. I think I think it's it's uh, it's important to get the message across how how we thought about it. So I'm, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. So let's start with it, sir. What really is the thinking behind this fifteen thousand crore commitment in an Adani Group of companies? So as you know, we've been, we have followed this group for a while, and um, and and we had never done anything um, because as you know, infrastructure is, has been a tough space. In, in general, we have been underweight infra. In fact, we, we barely any owned anything in for, for the longest time. But I think I think the recent events um, kind of made it very, very attractive um, in general. And and the other aspect is that the group itself, from a fundamental bottom-up perspective, is better position. If you look at Adani Enterprise, for example, them getting Mumbai Airport uh, two, two and a half years ago, that was a kind of game changer, but the stock ran away. Um, uh, if you look at the, 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 the Adani Port, and their foray into the more, more, more sort of uh, hinterland as such could could make it very powerful. Um, so I think I think every name had its own unique entity, uh, a, a, a sort of a, a elements which made it very attractive. Uh, and and we, as you know, we have significant investments on the utility type businesses. In fact, if I look at it globally outside of India, we have almost five billion dollars invested in utility type assets, pipeline, airports. Uh, so we do understand those business. And I thought there was a kind of a mismatch between how people look at classic PE type stuff, which is not really the is is not really that 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 sort of relevant in, in the stage these companies are. So that was kind of the the genesis of how we thought about these, you know, the the, the whole group. Well, allow me to take the clock back, the sell off in Adani group of stocks. Uh, what to your mind led to the sell off in Adani group of stocks and what gives you the commitment that despite the erosion in the equity value, uh, the group is in fine fettle? So as you know, the, the starting point, I mean, the stock, first of all, did run up quite aggressive last year and a half, two years. Uh, and some of them was like Radani Green that ran up along with the other uh, similar names in Europe and other places. So, you know, they, 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 there was a big influx of ESG money, uh, whether index or active, into these kind of names. And, and that obviously, you know, made, uh, made, made some of these stocks kind of uh, uh, you know, a bit expensive versus their own history, and and then this this short sale report came out, uh, which which obviously uh, was was very uh, strongly worded in my opinion. Uh, although as we started peeling the onion, we thought that this was kind of you know old rehash story, uh, and and the and from our perspective, the substance was not as as as, as meaningful here. Um, but but that that sort of triggered this leg, which, which which took it down. And I think the other part is that the technicalities of the index players involved, uh, so and so kind of made it worse. Right. Uh, the fact that Adani Group of stocks by traditional yardstick are expensive and that debt levels are high. Uh, as a fund manager, as an investor, uh, what gives you the conviction that both the concerns, which historically have been big concerns for Adani Group of stocks. Uh, those uh, concerns, uh, according to you, in your playbook, is something which is manageable. See, if you look at vast majority, or vast majority of the assets are regulated assets. They tend to a very, very long tail. So when you have, you, you can't have financial leverage along with operating leverage. These companies uh, have very sort of uh, predictable long-term trajectory, even if you slow down the growth. So that's the first part of it. And when you adjust for the leverage, in fact, if you look at the U.S. utilities. And we, and, and we own a bunch of them, on an average debt to EBITDA levels in US utilities, and these are some of the best of the breed, is around six to seven times debt to EBITDA. Uh, if you look at the, the leverage here, it's around three, three and a half times. But the growth capex is why the, the, the negative free cash flow kicks in. So I think I think uh, they have predictable revenue earning stream that, that, that has 20 plus year visibility. They, these are regulated assets. 
And in growth utilities, they tend to have negative free cash flow. That's the norm. That's in fact, you want to have them. You, you want to have them have negative free cash flow. That means because they're they're able to deploy capital on a longer term basis with fairly attractive returns. So the the debt levels, when you look from a utility perspective, is actually on the lower side, not on the higher side. But if they if they lower the capex plans, which they already announced, I think I think I think it becomes a fairly attractive sort of risk reward. The fact that uh, Arani Enterprises FPO did not go through that means the project the the proposed capital in the company will not come in, and that will have impact on the growth plan. Uh, are you conscious of that? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, no, of course we are, and I think I think uh, that again is a growth capex issue rather than maintenance capex because a lot of these businesses don't have a lot of maintenance capex. Um, uh, so, so I think, I think, I think, uh, on, on, you know, from that perspective, uh, we feel it's perfectly fine. They just have to tune down the growth rates, uh, but it becomes a lot more stable and hence arguably higher valuation. Rajiv Jain has always maintained that the way he invests is that good news and good prices never come together and he never wastes a crisis. So is this some kind of a crisis where you are investing the classic Rajiv Jain way, never waste a crisis? Yeah, look, Nikhil, I mean, I think I think that's that's an important part of what we do because if you think about investing, it's nothing but an arbitrage between perception and reality. If there's a perfect company, so chances are the prices would be so expensive that it be, actually becomes an imperfect stock. Uh, and it, I'll give you a couple of examples. I mean, I remember first time when we bought ITC in a meaningful way was 1996 when there was a tax. Uh, 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 liability risk on them, and the stock declined. I believe it was early 1996, by almost 35 percent plus. And as you know, we own ITC. We ended up owning ITC for over two decades. I believe almost 21 years. Then, then if I go back to um, actually 2004 election, we bought significantly during the election. The market is almost 25, 30 percent in a matter of days. Um, and uh, then the last one would be the sanctions, U.S. sanctions against India in 1998. And the market is down almost 35, 40 percent matter of six, seven months. In fact, but I will also tell you, I'm telling you some of the winners. So to be fair, I have to tell you one of the losers, which was I got very nervous in early 17 um, after the demonetization, which obviously was a huge mistake. Um, so, so yeah, so in general, uh, you know, if you buy fundamentally sound businesses with a very high barriers to entry, because think about it, you cannot replicate Mumbai Airport. The, uh, can you predict earnings growth of Microsoft? Which is a fantastic franchise. Uh, Twelve months out, they've gone from twenty percent revenue growth to five six percent revenue growth. That, that 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 is, in other words, compared to Mumbai Airport, it's actually much more predictable long term story. The question is, you got to buy cheap enough. So why did you shy away from buying a Dani Group of stocks uh, earlier? They still had the airport. They still had the infrastructure projects in place, and. Uh, they did not have uh, any kind of concerns which a lot of analysts have raised about high valuations and high leverage. What stopped you from buying them in 2020, 21, or even 22? Yeah, so I think I think if you look at the if, if, uh, ports, for example, the regulatory changes have been much more recent, by the way. So I think the, the fundamentals of business today are better in the last two years than they were before at the margin. Number two is, look, we, we deploy a lot of capital. Uh, you, you can't simply start chasing because you, you can't execute in two days or something. You know, you, when you talk about hundreds of millions of dollars, I mean, half a billion dollars kind of stuff, you, 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 you know, we, we would move the price. So we do need some sort of uh, a shakeout for us to enter. Um, and, and, and these things had such a strong momentum. And the valuations were, you know, were getting extended. So we couldn't have executed them in a, in a sort of proper manner versus, let's say, a, a, in my opinion, a mini crisis like what we're seeing now.